time to talk to us today. Really appreciate it, Matthew. How are you doing so far? Doing well. Um, you know, as well as can be expected. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, sorry for making you go through all this stuff. I'm sure you've been through it with everybody else. So apologies ahead of time. You're quite um, right. um, so we saw you scale the rock. What was it? Just excitement? Was it the challenge? What went through your mind when you when you saw that rock and said, you know what, I have to do that? Well, first off, that beach is by far my favorite beach in all of Survivor history. So when I saw that I was on that beach, I was like, this is perfect. So, you know, we get done with the sweat challenge. Um, you know, it's the next morning. I make fire for the crew and we're finally getting to explore. And one of the things that my, one of my personal mantras going into Survivor was, you know, I love nature. I love being outside, but in order right. to find those advantages, those hidden idols, I was like, you got to find what's not nature. What, what is, what sticks out. And so looking at that rock, there was, and you can kind of see it from one of the drone shots, but there was something weird on top of that. <laughs> uh, and that's honestly what it was. I was like, that was weird. I'm going to go for it. And so that's what it was. It all came down to just like very spontaneous, instantaneous, like I'm going to do that. Yeah. But that's yeah. very true to who I am. I'm a spontaneous person. I, you know, I will, if I, I mean, the winds could change and I, you know, I'm fine with, you know what I mean? And, and, and I love that about myself is that I have the ability to just be very free and, um, and spontaneous. And it leads to a lot of great new adventures, you know, because I just, I'm not, I don't hold myself to any kind of necessarily rules or whatnot. I live a, live a pretty free life. Now, um, I assume that after you were injured, you had it assessed. Um, did the, the survival medical team check in with you? How did that whole process work out? Let, it, let us in on that, because I assume sure. they were really concerned about you. Yeah, so I did I did get it. Uh, Dr. Will did come to the island and did check me out. You know, right. he just said that, you know, it appears that your shoulder did come out of socket and it is back fully in socket. And so that's when he advised me, you know, no load bearing activities for two to three weeks. And I'm like, this is, this, this is three like, weeks. I'm like, dude, I'm on Survivor. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, all right. Well, this obviously has to change. Uh, and, you know, and I came out there with no plan. And my plan was to make a plan when I needed to with the information that I had, you know. And so that changed my game. And I had to be adaptable to that moment. And I had, you know, and obviously you see how uh, it all played out. And I, I think that I reacted to my injury in the best way that I possibly could. Um, and it actually, in a way, I used it as a cover a lot to act, do all those things because nobody was really like, oh, Matt's just hurt. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> now, lead us through what happened after you made, I mean, you decided to leave the game for medical reasons, obviously putting your health first, which, you know, many people have done before. Um, so what happened after that? Lead us through that as well. What, what, uh, what, happened after that so in fiji we were still in a covid bubble um at right. ponderosa so right. so i got back you know obviously dr will had examined me and he's like you've definitely injured re-injured your arm we've seen that it popped out again you put it back in socket and so these are all of the things that could have happened but i can't tell you if any of those happened because we need an x-ray we need an right. mri right. we need a cat scan and we don't have those here in the field. You've got to get medical attention. And yeah, so, you yeah. know, Fiji being the country that it is, where we were, I would have to travel to the other side of Fiji to get to a main <laughs> hospital. Because so when Bruce was met of that, yeah, it was a over a nine hour ambulance ride back from the hospital. Wow. So, so and then he had to go back into a COVID bubble, you know. And so, the conversation was, what can you do for me here? You know, and the reality is, it's not much, you know, they're going to put me in a sling, you know, they're going to give me medication, they're going to yeah. say and sleep sitting up, you know, and so there was really nothing that they could do for me. Um, but I needed to be out of the gate. I wasn't I needed to eat food, I needed to, you know, like, I needed to start, you know, the healing process. Um, so unfortunately, there really wasn't much they could do for me other than, you know, start the healing process. So you went back home, I assume you had it all assessed and, and did they did confirm it was a dislocated shoulder and, and and how is it now? What was the process back home? So I got home and uh, we found out that I had a laundry list of issues. Um, wow. So I had surgery in November and that surgery addressed, um, I fractured my humerus and a piece about the size of a dime broke off and that oh. had to be remodeled. I fractured my scapula that had to be reattached. I 
tore my rotator cuff. I tore my labrum, which is the lining of your shoulder that had to be readdressed. The, the cartilage in my joint was shoved down so that had to be reattached. My subscapularis muscle had to be reattached. So it was basically- So if you're, like, so if you're at this point, you're like $6 million man. We're like putting you back yeah, again. This is like totally bionic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So how is it? How is it now? I mean, you went through all that surgery. I assume you had therapy and everything. How was everything? Yes. Amen, immense amount of uh, physical therapy. Um, I was with Ohio State's um, uh, athletic sports athletic group, um, oh, wow. and so so they have been treating me as a you know college athlete um, as far as like my progression and getting me back to that level. Wow! I am um, back to doing full workouts. I'm back to you know back to training for that second chance. That I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm back in the gym and I'm, I'm, I'm getting my body back. So I'm, um, it's been a long process, but the team at Ohio state and my physical therapy team have, um, all been working with that goal of like, I want to be back on survivor, get me back to that shape. And that's what, that's been the, that's been the route we're on. That, that is, that is fantastic news. Now, one thing I want to ask you, because as we all know, a clap on the back is like eight inches from a kick in the butt. And I know if I came home, my wife would be, I'm so glad you're okay. I'm so glad you're fine. And then I want to got that shot in the head. <laughs> how, did, how did your family react to the to the whole thing? I'm sure they were really concerned about your health first and foremost. Yeah, you know, you know, we, you know, the the pre-merge group, you know, we get sent home um, prior to the post-merge group, right. you know, because they're they're sequestered in the jury, and so right, you know, we get sent home early, and so there's that knowledge of like if you are in the pre-merge, you're going to get a phone call. Right. And so my husband gets that phone call, you know, like you're coming home. And I had asked production state, let him know I am injured. I need a doctor's yeah. appointment. Oh, that right. conversation got missed. And so he didn't know that I was injured. Wow. So when I finally got back to LA and get my phone and he's like, oh my gosh, how are you? And I'm like, I'm very injured. I'm very, very hurt. So it went from like, oh, you didn't do well in the game to like, oh no, you're hurt. You're yeah, yeah. Hurt. And so it, it, it definitely changed things. You know, um, my husband had never at any point or my family was like you're a dumbass for climbing the rock well my sister said that because, <laughs> but she's she's a she's she's special <laughs> she want. Uh, i have a specific word but i can't say it on tv right. Right. Uh, but she, <laughs> she, she she and she has that right but yeah. everybody else was very much like not gonna beat me up for my actions yeah. um you know and, and and you know my family knows me they know that i seek out adventure they know that i Right. The, they're not they weren't surprised in the slightest that i did that you know now, and, so, go ahead and, yeah now as as again we've went through all this uh you know we saw this play out on tv or most of it is there anything i mean i mean you've been able to watch it back now and i ask this of every survivor i talk to every castaway is there anything about your journey that you wish they would have showed whether it be a moment a strategy any kind of bond or anything is there anything you wish would have made it to the to the show um you know I think that they represented my edit very, very well. I think right. that I was really happy to not see a lot of my suffering in there. I think that was very nice on their part because I yeah. did suffer. Um, but one thing that they really didn't show is that, you know, after losing that first immunity challenge, Jamie said, let's get together. Let's, let's meditate. And, um, and I, I had meditated in the past, uh, but I've never done it in a group setting. And so right, we're right. sitting there, she's guiding us through this and we're breathing and we're getting to the end. And she said, ask us to basically squeeze our butthole to hold the energy up. And I tell you, she says, I was like, you want me to squeeze my what? <laughs> <laughs> and so this meditation session, all of us just burst into laughter. We're like, I'm not squeezing my Chico bonbon for you. <laughs> so that was the one moment that like truly bonded us as a group. We all kind of like meditated and like kind of, I felt like the guards go down. Yeah. And I really feel like that's what led us into the snake challenge. Obviously my skill there brought it home, but we were as a group were really connected. I think that we all had a, a really good mindset going in. And I think that all comes from Jamie leading us through that meditation. Now, as we saw you, um, exhibited some of the qualities of some of the best survivor players because you were really well-rounded um as far as your game goes socially strategic at challenges you were the total package out there did you surprise yourself going out there at, at how well you did and this and again we only saw so much of you but you did really well 
I did surprise myself, but you know, I also, you know, I was originally supposed to be in season 41, um, oh. obviously pre pre COVID. Then right. you know, that happens. I got recast. So that whole time frame of quarantine and lockdown gave me so much time to prepare. And right. so it had I been in season 41 versus season 44, I wouldn't have been the same player. I, right. I don't think I would have been as effective. I wouldn't have had the confidence. So that extra time gave me the ability to marinate and really work on my skills. And so you know, going in, you don't know how effective you're going to be, but going out, I was like, God damn, I really did a good job. I really did good. And all the time that I spent, you know, preparing was, it worked. It was valid. It had worth. And so I was very, very prepared. Not only, you know, like the social game, but, you know, surviving, you know, the, the elements, like yeah. I was, and had knowledge, I had skills, you know? So yes, I was, I, I, the reason I was a well-rounded player was because I made myself into that well-rounded player. Right. Now, one thing I want to ask you about is obviously the fake idol. <laughs> Your plan worked to perfection. Jamie yes. has, is there any part of you that feels a little bit bad about that? Or, or was this exactly how you wanted things to play out? Or did you want somebody else to find it? Well, the original target was Lauren. Okay, so right. originally Lauren was the target, but she and I were not connecting. I couldn't get her to go on walks with me. And so right. Jamie and I, you know, were incredibly connected on a personal level but when it came to strategy we were not gelling at all i would talk to her and she would like okay and think about it and just for me if i talk strategy it's like boom, 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 got it okay boom, 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 got it and she's like okay let me think about this and i'm like oh gosh no oh, gosh. <laughs> so that when i shifted the idol to Jamie, it was really because I already, Keen and I were very much aligned after that first tribal council. Brandon and I were still aligned, but he, but he doesn't know that the other things are happening. So I'm keeping everybody calm. And so to get Jamie to find that idol, because what happens when you see two people find an idol together, the person says, this is for us. This is us. <laughs> and so that, created that, that gave me the trust and the bond that I needed with Jamie to get that solid third. Yeah. So now Jamie and I are, are solid. I found an idol in front of her. So that's what the bond I needed. And so that also is the shield that I need down the road. So I've got her as a number, but now I've got a, she doesn't know that I can put a target on her back at any point in time and flip it on her. So is, you know, so that was the gameplay there was to really, you know, pull her in as a number, but then also give my built in shield into that play. And what was your, if you had stayed in the game, what was your strategy going into the merger? What would you want it to do? So Ratsu at that point, because obviously Carson, it came to our tribe. Yeah. Um, Ratsu was, yeah. we were going to get Soka to come, I'm sorry, Tika. We were going to try and pull Tika's numbers in with us to take yeah. out Soka. Um, you know, throughout the game, Soka was seen as, seen as the most well-rounded tribe um, and probably the most, you know, ones that were most set up to win so we really wanted to pull in uh tika to start taking out soka so that was the plan is to start taking out those numbers we sent brandon as a group with danny yeah to that uh yeah. that journey because we thought that brandon would have the best opportunity to talk with with danny and obviously you see that that was the case um and then it led you know um caroline down the road of saying get josh out of here yeah, yeah. and so it really is kind of setting up that idea of like rats who can work with tika to go after soka in the merch that was that's where we were and with me being injured i'm not you know no one thinks of me as a threat and they also don't know what i'm doing so i easily could have made it into the merge without a doubt and still made it for far into the game um you know but unfortunately my injuries did not allow that to happen for me now, one last uh, question before we go. Um, this this is probably a no-brainer. Would you play again? And if so, would you play any differently now that you've gone through the experience and you've you've made your mistakes, you've had your successes? Yeah. Um, um, how would you play any differently? And would you play again? I hope so. I would one thousand <laughs> percent play again. I I mean, I'm back into full training mode with the hopes that I'll get that call. You yeah. know. So um. So yeah, that's no-brainer. Yeah, but you know, if I do go back, um, you know, when that opportunity comes up, like everybody's seen that I can play this game and I can play it very, very hard. So yeah. now I got to step it up. I got to do things even more creative. I've got to be even more um, than what I was, and I can't play the same tricks twice. Right, you know right. I mean? No one's gonna believe me if they find a fake idol in front of me. Like I, I can't do that again. You know what I mean? So I've got to, I've got to come up with new tricks, and that's the thing that I love is that. I like to be creative. 
I like to think things through and I like to let my mind go, you know, and then pick an item and you pick an item. Has this one got any meat to it? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's develop this a little bit more. Okay. That's not working. Throw that away. You know, so it was just like the constant thing of like, okay, how can I play this game differently? And how can I do it in a way that is reflective of me, but also am I having fun? So that sounds great. And again, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. So glad that you're a hundred percent now and, and, and everything's well and I do really do hope we get to see you again because I have a funny feeling that your survivor journey isn't over yet. At least I hope not. I truly hope that too. Um, you know, Jeff is, Jeff has been more than um, gracious and with him talking about my gameplay and saying right. that, you know, like I'm the perfect kind of person for survivor, you know, vulnerable, 100% gives, goes for it. Like right. that's, that is me as a person. And so to hear Jeff probe someone who I hold as, on such a high pedestal say that me as a person my personality is perfect for this game is just like the biggest compliment you can ever receive you know and so even though my time was short i think that i still have a lot to offer and i i hope that i'll, I'll get that call well your time was short but you made a big impact so congratulations again glad you're doing well and all the best to the future and take care thank you so much yeah take